Abzu released in 2016 by Giant Squid Studios and featuring a soundtrack by Austin Wintry and sound design by Steve Green is an underwater adventure and exploration game that takes place in a vibrant ocean. You are a nameless unspeaking protagonist player character, an artificial intelligence entity who communicates in deep sea ecosystems through sonic pings, contributing little disruptive ocean noise and transducing underwater experience for the player. The narrative is conveyed through the content and conditions of the environment the player explores at their own pace, rather than the spoken or written word. As the diver descends deeper, they encounter unique regional aquatic life, unexpected sonic environments, the ruins of past civilizations, and the presence of unexpected sentient technological life. The player character can dive, swim, grab onto fish for a boost of speed, and otherwise interact with and scan the environment. Over the course of play, the abstract narrative reveals that the AI diver has the ability to repair the ocean health in damaged regions. We learn, however, that this regenerative power the diver acquires through exploration and meditation is the very same power emitted by the nefarious technological life force uncovered in the ocean depths, and it's extracted from the white shark, one of the diver's companion species. Through a close reading of Wintry's soundtrack and Green's sound design, this paper calls for an extended listening to the landscapes, geographies, places, and environments of games designed and played during an ongoing time of climate crisis. Games are not mere escapes into other worlds. They are also ways of sensing and embodying exploratory representations of specific places, environments outside and beyond the lived experience of humans. Games are alternative spatial practices, and they nod to possible speculative futures. The sounds of a place reveal much about its conditions, and by listening to Abzu's ocean, players get a sense of the spatial and sonic spaces, living and non-living things, and the phenomena such as the currents that comprise its ecologies. With Wintry and Green's dynamic soundtrack and sound design, respectively, the player explores and progresses through the game with an attention to the collective spatial temporal character of sound, noticing and understanding the sonic atmospheres of the places that they witness, move through, and explore. Through careful in-game listening to Abzu's ocean, the player is able to encounter sound as a way of knowing, as an acoustomology to follow Feld, granting human listeners access to a situated environmental listening context that their sensorium is restricted from accessing in their actual lives. The concept of soundscape and its application has spread widely since Armory Schaefer's initial development of soundscape studies and the ongoing work of the World Soundscape Project, and it continues to be a generative way to understand the complexity of sonic environments. Whether that soundscape is a live concert, a scene in a film, an internet meme, or an actual place. Elsewhere, I have examined modes of playing otherwise by sound walking and listening across games such as Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing New Horizons and Proteus, among other games with different types of ecologically, ecological process to understand how we map and spatially experience sound. Grounded in gameplay autoethnography, I'm arguing that the function of in-game listening and playing along with the acoustic ecologies of Abzu's ocean aids in processing the complexities of human environment relationships and the articulation of ways of listening otherwise to actual and virtual at-risk sonic environments. In my discussion of the relationships among Abzu's aquatic ecosystem, modeling, sound design, narrative, and game mechanics, I'm applying approaches from the Blue Humanities and Stefan Helmerich's concept of the alien ocean to address the ways players interact with and develop an understanding of the deep sea soundscapes inside and outside the game world that are beyond human perception. Players are often drawn to games that articulate possibilities of visualizing and listening to environments that human beings are fascinated with, but these environments, the oceans, rivers, and water bodies attended through the lens of the blue humanities are outside of human perception and habitation, yet these environments are at the center of anthropocentric climate change. Scientists, humanists, and artists are extending forms of environmental monitoring, data collection, and communication to understand the aquatic environments that we cannot fully sense ourselves. 
Ecological video games frequently consider how inequities in power and agency are translated into constructions of knowledge and the epistemological framing and scoring of the non-human other, and what that communicates about being human in environmental art that explores environments uninhabited by human life. In Abzu, I look to how the framework of the Blue Humanities and Blue Media more broadly can shape the discussion of ecological game sound design. Playing Abzu involves a playful exploratory engagement by listening to and interacting with the physical and sonic environment of the game's virtual ocean and its flora and fauna. In his theorization of what he calls playful listening, Timothy Summers uses Disney's Fantasia film and video game series to discuss the multivalent ways of playfully listening and how it can transform listening to music in game and outside, on screen and off. If players listen playfully to the dynamic environmental soundscapes, sonic ecologies and representational sound design of place and environment specific games like the deep sea environs of Abzu, it is possible for players to develop empathy, understanding and care for the oceans outside gameplay and off screen. In these ludic contexts, playful listening is subversive and even at times activist, requiring players to participate in listening out to the unexpected in the familiar with renewed attention, understanding, and interest in our immediate sonic environments. Absu is a meditation on the scope and size of the ocean as a vibrant ecosystem with an often ignored ecological diversity from its reefs to its kelp forests to its ocean banks and abysses, where the player explores the ocean's poetic pulsing and physical structures. There are also meditation spots that you discover during exploration. In these locations, you can pause your exploration for an unspecified amount of time and direct the diver to meditate signaling a change in perspective where the game camera presents the player the aquatic life in that meditation region, focusing on one animal at a time as the player cycles through at their leisure. These meditative moments of gameplay highlight the potential for the interactive arts in practices of noticing multi-species ecologies. In another region of the ocean at an early point in the game, the diver encounters a pods of whales and swims with them as they feed. The soundscape in this region layers the songs, groans, grunts, and squeals of baleen whales against the arrhythmic harp glissandi, an aleatoric gesture where wintry leave, leaves each of the seven harpists' rhythm and exact tempo up to chance. In both of these moments in gameplay, the player is encouraged to listen out to the soundscape beyond the human. Here, I'm drawing on Kate Lacey's concept of listening out, a form of listening where the listener is, in, quote, invited to listen out for the unexpected, to listen out to things that might challenge their preconceptions and widen their horizons, end quote. Through their compositional choices and the spatialization of their sound design, Wintry and Green invite players to listen out to the sonic ecologies of Abzu's oceans, process their relations among species, and consider the relationship via the diver to these soundscapes, including the real-world ramifications of their actions on actual ocean ecologies. The collective cultural imagination of the ocean informs Wintry's orchestral writing. However, Green's sound design redirects the player's ear to the vibrant acoustic communication of the ocean. Let us now turn to ways of composing and sound designing the ocean ecosystem of Abzu that Wintry and Green employ in their composition and environmental sound design that in order to imagine what I call watery listening and what that might sound like. Here I focus on instances of listening in the game of Abzu that involve the sonification of ocean currents and movements specifically. 
Wintry score uses a variety of compositional techniques that focus on instrumental color and timbral effects in order to sonify the physical sensation of ocean currents and the distinctive ways of moving through water, sometimes floating while at, the, at other times pushing forward in an ocean current that has agency over your body. Alongside the sound effects of swimming sounds as fins and flippers displace water and sea plants ripple as water moves around them. As the diver swims with the current through underwater caves and reef structures, the player hears Abzu's main theme, To Know Water, in variation. Wintry scores the breaking waves of undulating arpeggios with depths and crests played by a single or group of instruments like the harp, or they move between different instrumental voices. The arpeggios rise, open up, crest, and fall, creating a sense of both vertical and forward movement. And when these arpeggiations are played at slightly different tempi, they express the push and pull, tension and release of different viscosities of ocean waters. He also applies reverb plugins that indicate how long blocks of sound should ring, resulting in the conduction of shimmering impressionistic harmonies underwater that sonically stage the ocean's vastness, but also the gradations of color, light, temperature, current, and movement found there. And in the tradition of Debussy's La Mer, a nuage, Wintory relies on the sonic properties of the oboe as the main melodic instrument in To Know Water in order to cut through his ocean of orchestral sound and the acoustic environment of Abzu's virtual ocean. On the surface, Abzu may not appear to be what is called a serious game, or a game for change, understood as games that have a social impact. However, this generic label can be extended to Abzu because it similarly conveys ideas and values, in this case concerning the ecology of an ocean environment, and has the potential to influence a player's thoughts and actions in actual life and relationship to the ocean. In his active criticism of the reliance on simulation and gamification in serious games, Ian Bogost suggested persuasive games as an alternative. Persuasive games, Bogost argued, should provide conditions where players should interpret a subject differently based on their in-game interactions and experiences. Games that are designed to persuade players to relate differently to people, issues, and environments in their actual life, in, actual in actuality, vary in their technological sophistication, narrative, message framing, game dynamics, and pedagogical features that communicate these messages. Abzu's game design, abstract word wordless narrative, and sonic storytelling persuades players to understand and care for the vibrancy of ecologies beyond the human. In Playing Nature, Alinda Chang eloquently details how games model actual world ecological relationships and natural environments. Her discussion of ecological games, however, rarely attends to the acoustic ecology and game audio of these games unless sound is a central gameplay mechanic, as it is, for example, in Flower. Sound and listening are vital forms of sensuous knowledge used by humans and more than humans to communicate, navigate, and understand the environments that they're part of. As I demonstrate here, listening to the acoustic ecology of a game world reveals the ways sensory-rich experiences are incorporated into gameplay. From an auditory perspective, Abzu offers players a meaningful encounter with deep sea ecosystems and fosters ecological thought where players observe through the course of play that everything is interconnected, contributing to the interlaced stories of how humans have imagined, listened to, sonically represented, and interacted with the ocean in audiovisual culture. Thank you.